by the time you see this video, it'll be too late. So I'm gonna shoot for the fucking moon here and say at this point in time, Gavin or New G Gavin or Newsom. <laughs> Governor Newsom, Governor Gavin Newsom, I stop with the G's, yo. Enough with the G's. Gavin Newsom will still be your California governor. If not, then a lot of what I'm going to say is going to be wrong, <laughs> just off rip. But we're going to try. We're going to try. We're going to see. We're going to take the information that we have and actually add some. We're going to do a real-time dissection of, like, every piece of news about Larry Elder. <laughs> but before we do that, because I want to do this live, I want to see if there, if this exists. Because I know that, I know that, uh, you know, I kind of forgot about it. But I, you know what? Oh my God. Okay. 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 So this is effectively what I'm about to see there. Um, oh yeah. I need all this. I need all this. Okay. We were going to do a Twitter dissection, but it looks like I got, I got enough here. This week, the same. Okay, okay, we got enough. We got enough. I love it. We got enough. We got enough. You're on record. It's, it's clipped. Now to L I was going to do it with the live, see what they're talking about. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up. Wait a minute. Tuition, subsidies. We, of course, have Medicare. We have Medicaid. All of these things have taken money from one sector of our society and giving it, given it to the other while diminishing the incentive of both the giver and the give in. These things are wrong. California. You need health insurance, you fucking morons. Please don't, don't do that. Please tell me by the time this video drops tomorrow, I will have been correct in saying that you heard that and you were like, LOL, no. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Why is it that the people... <laughs> Why is it that the people who want to basically abolish everything about the government also want to work and be paid by the government? Like, a hey, fucking yo. Like, okay. Okay. Larry Elders. <laughs> that, that caught me. <laughs> this one got me. This one fucking got me. Not even, not even, not, not even gonna front. 10 out of 10. Banger. <laughs> like... It would just explain way too fucking much. Like, that's a banger. <laughs> that's a banger. All right, all right, Chank. You be all right. You be all right. Okay, um, we can keep doing it. All right, so the issue is, let's see if we can work through. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was thinking about the you, the name of the title of this video, and I was like, you know what it would be good to be? The issue actually is Larry Elder sucks, like. <laughs> Sage from South Central heading to Sacramento. And Gavin Newsom should be nervous. <laughs> I'm going to take his job. Larry Elder announcing he's running for California governor. So what's his platform? I'm going to take his job. What's his path to victory then? This is what recovery looks like. This is what it means to build back better. An exclusive one on one with the U.S. Secretary of Education at a mentorship event in Hollywood. We'll talk mass vaccines, critical race theory and the future of classrooms in California. The issue is starts right now. Broadcasting across California. Let's see what California's we got. Only 
statewide political show. You're watching The Issue Is. Why, why or whatnot, ask you some when stupid we... question like that? No, they're gerbils. Of course they're human beings. That was Larry Elder on our show debating Hassan Piker. Larry has been well known to millions as a conservative commentator for decades, but now for the first time, he's a candidate himself. So I am hereby announcing that I am running for governor of California. That's Larry on his syndicated radio show announced. I'm announcing. I'm announcing that I noticed that like nobody gives a shit about this election. So I'm going to just, you know, use my millions of followers and then I'm a and then I'm a I'm a win because nobody cares because nobody's talking about it because who cares sing his run for California governor as a Republican All right, but like if I don't if I if I'm not careful that could be me in 20 years so I'm gonna shut up Larry Elder joins us now Larry welcome back to the issue is Okay, upon like seeing this picture, no, that's never gonna be me. I'm, my wave's always gonna be crispy. If you ever see me looking like that, if I don't get the tin black baldy, if you don't see me bulk up, if I look like that, yo, report me, R report me, D call, swap me. <laughs> if I ever look like that, swap me. I, oh, thank permission. you so much for having Only me. Only one... in that one specific instance, 20 to 25 years from now. Thing. This is my second time running. I ran for class president in the fifth grade. <laughs> I beat William, William Moore. I carried three out of four roles. They're still cleaning up the blood. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, I, ooh. <laughs> like, it's like, I get that you're trying to be cool and like, but like, you are about to flip the Senate. Like, you need to have like, oh, God. I beat him in the fifth grade. Like, you still thinking about that, bro? <laughs> I, I lost my uh, fifth grade election, uh, so good for you. What schools was having fifth grade elections? You got me there. So if, if you had to say bottom line why Sorry, you're running. Sorry, I'm, I'm done being running? that guy. I've got common sense. I've got good judgment, something sadly lacking in Sacramento. I've been on radio for 30 years in every major market from Sacramento down to San Diego. People know me. I've been talking about solutions to these problems of crime and homelessness and the, and the rising cost of living in California. And I think I can make the case so Joe and Joan Sixpack, who've left California and brought their Democrat vote with them, realize why they're leaving. Uh, you have called this state ungovernable. You've said a Republican can't get anything done because there's a Democratic supermajority in Sacramento. You said before you didn't want to run because you didn't right. think you could do anything if you get there. So what has changed? Why can you now govern it? Well, you know, uh, when I said about the supermajorities of Democrats in the, in the assembly, they're also there because of the power of the public sector unions. Uh, you cannot win in this state without the backing of the public sector unions. And this is why Republicans get crushed all the time. Uh, we need to do something about pension reform. And until somebody has no the way, uh, you cannot Hold win wait, in this state wait, without the wait. backing of the public sector unions. This Am I hyper thinking this? You can tell me if I'm not hyper thinking this, but is his fucking mask backwards? <laughs> I know upside down. Like, I know that that's, like, so pedantic and so unnecessary to care about. But, like, for a second, like, is your mask upside down? I feel like it isn't. But, like, I also feel like those masks don't bend that easy on the top. Like, they bend curved on the top. They bend, like, I'm uh, sorry, they bend, like, pointed on the top. They bend curved on the bottom. But that's if you press the, the wire in. You see, like, how the bottom of that one is, like, it's, like, curved, but the top of this one is, like, sharp. If it were the, if it were the, the line, it would be around, curved. I know I'm saying mad confusing shit. I could just, like, put on a mask and fucking show it. But, um... This is why Republicans get crushed all the time. But then the white part is on the bottom, which is what I'm really going for here. His mask is upside uh, down. We what need the to do fuck? something about pension reform. And until I, mean, I could be wrong, that could be a different type of mask. Somebody That's has why I'm the, not. the courage to begin to talk about the, the very fact that the public sector unions have this much power. Republicans will never win a damn thing in this state. And I'm the guy that's going to be at least start the conversation. But see, but how do you actually get something done because of the power of the public sector unions, because of that Democratic supermajority? I mean, if you get in there, aren't they just going to ignore you and try to ride out the time until they can elect a Democrat next November? 
Well, I checked recently and I saw that Arnold Schwarzenegger, the last Republican governor, and I put uh, that sort of in quotes because in my opinion, he went so far left, I don't really consider him to be a Republican, but he vetoed hundreds of bills. Not a single one was overwritten because once you veto it, you do have the, the power of the bully pulpit. that you can explain to Joe and Joan Sixpack why you're vetoing it. You also have the ability to declare emergencies as this uh, governor has done many, many times regarding the pandemic. You also have a line item veto uh, and you also have the ability to appoint people to the commissions that have a lot of power and Maybe I can roll back some of these ridiculous regulations that are stopping people from building homes, which is why we have a housing shortage. This week, the governor... You don't have a housing shortage. Okay. This... I have to pee and I can't leave, so you're really getting my raw opinion on this one. Place, we do not have a housing shortage in this fucking country. We have a market that overbears and overprices houses, so only a select amount of people can get them. <laughs> like, no homeless person want to be homeless. The, 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 there, are, there are enough homes to home everybody. It's the people who say, I'm only going to give this home away for $165,000, and it's like, yo, I got some Gorilla Glue and a vape. Like, can I help you? Can we do that? Can we can we exchange? I got a blunt, bro. We could smoke that up, and I could just, you know, slide right in there. Like, I could just, whoo, I could swoo with it. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> That's just, how are you running for governor? And you say the regulations are stopping people from from homes, which is why we have a housing crisis. Like, didn't Florida just have like a building come down in the CISA and the Surfside collapse? Like, wasn't that a thing? And that was because of the lax regulations. Like, that's why I'd be like, yo, I really should. I wish I had the money for like an office type thing, because. <sighs> If I really sat down and really chomped through every single word somebody said, like I could really like tell you like, okay, I don't agree with their ideas, but they're plausible. Like if that was the way life were to go, like that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But like, if you just say shit out your mouth, like. Governor signed his budget at a campaign style event. He says California is creating more jobs than any other state, has a better economy than anyone else. Here's some of what he said. For those that have counted California out, eat your heart out. He says we've got a record surplus. He's given millions of people $600 checks, paying back rent for many, expanding spending to fight homelessness by billions. Do you see any of that as good? Recently, the former governor of California, Jerry Brown, just gave an interview. And he said the spending is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And he said that the, the uh, so-called budgetary surplus to use the word Democrats like to use regarding inflation, is transitory. Based upon the budget projections, we're going to be having a deficit in the next year or two. And he's been saying that uh, that Gavin Newsom has been giving money, as you pointed out, in order to buy votes. He didn't say that. He said he's been <laughs> giving money out ir irresponsibly. I'm saying it's, it's to buy votes in order for him to stave off this recall. There are forecasts that show... Sometimes you just got to be thankful that there was like even Trump, like I got to give it to Trump. Like, and you know, that's some of the hardest shit to like ever say. Cause like, because of him, a couple of my people are dead. So like, at least they got money out, yo. Like it wasn't, it was a very flawed system. It didn't work to any of the degrees that it should have, but like at least like something was done. Cause I really felt like they were about to be like, LOL, good luck. Like at least something got done somewhere. So the things are- So it's like, <laughs> I'm getting cold cause of this air conditioner and I have to pee, but I don't want to turn off the air conditioner cause every time I turn it off, it gets hot in here, fuck. Moving in the right direction in California, UCLA saying that we could have the best year that we've seen since World War II. I mean, what do you say to people who say we're moving in the right direction? Other states, two thirds of jobs have come back. In California, only 50% of jobs have come back. So.
fucking lying. <laughs> fucking lying. Wait, when was this? July 17th. Okay. Okay, so... Printed in August. Okay, so I guess to be fair, we'd have to look at the June. June. 54, you fucking lying. Oh my, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. When people say, yo, look for your, uh, do your own research. Like, d do your research here. Look how quick that was. Official statements. Now you could be like, he's lying or whatever. You could be like, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but if you're going to say everything that, that, that says anything against what somebody says is a lie, then we're not going to get anywhere. So like, what the fuck, yo? Like benefits paid weekend, September 4th, backlog of claims, uh, new and reopened claims, California, July 2021. That's actually not bad. 7.6 considering like, it was like, oh, I am really funny. It was like, like four people. Okay, so bullshit. Uh, I've got a lot of friends who are in the in, in business, in retail, uh, restaurant business. They cannot get workers because of all the money that Gavin Newsom is paying people essentially not to work. The That's a bullshit argument. I'm not even going to sit here and defend this on, uh, defend you, uh, have to like remark against that. I know I'm making a remark, but it's like, just letting you know that's a bullshit argument. If you want to know why, you should already know by now. And if you don't know why... think biggest issue for so many people which is homelessness what can right. you realistically get done given the restraints that you've talked about of the legislature that's a good question that's a fucking good question sometimes i really be so hyper focused on like preparing myself to like knock out a point or have the information pop up to my head i really do forget like there are some good hosts out there and there are people who like ask straightforward questions what I can realistically get done is to declare a national, a statewide emergency for homelessness. And that way I can suspend CEQA, that the Environmental Act that uh, uh, has been used to stop virtually any kind of project in this, in this, uh, in this state. Because once you get people self-sufficient to the degree that you can, the homeless people, where are they going to live? You, there are no cheap apartments in, in, uh, in California, no cheap low-cost housing, because developers uh, have been disincentivized to do that. So we play something called the name game on this show. This is a way to get real quick answers. This is the first word or a real <laughs> quick response about each of your opponents that comes to mind, okay? Right. Uh, right. So here we go. We begin with the governor of California, Gavin Newsom. Entitled and incompetent. Former San Diego mayor, Kevin Faulkner. Uh, he'll be a good addition to my cabinet when I win. <laughs> Republican assemblyman, Kevin Kiley. A very good addition to my cabinet when I win. Maybe I'll try to offer him my, my job as chief of staff. Former candidate, now current candidate, John Cox. Uh, the guy that lost by 20 points. Uh, look, and, and Alex, I, I know we're playing this kind of game, but the idea... I hate... I hate... First word or thought, bro. <laughs> When Caitlin was Bruce, uh, he was good to me. We did a big brother in Australia. What do you make of that? The leverage this week that Caitlin has left California for several weeks to go compete on Celebrity Big Brother in Australia. What do you make of that? I have no comment. Uh, I, I knew Caitlin when Caitlin was Bruce. Uh, he was good to me. We did a, a speaking engagement one time together. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't wish any ill will again on any of these Republicans. Anybody, including Caitlyn Jenner, would be better than Gavin Newsom. All right, let's talk a little bit more about you. What uh, much the of fuck? The dead naming? The dead naming? Oh, ew, ew. Your inspiration, Larry, comes from Just that dad. whole thing. Let's talk about that a little bit. In other now, words, I'm not touching no other Republican that happens to like Trump because I know they'll crucify me for it. My father, he came here in 19... 19- 45. He was able to buy a home in, in South Central Los Angeles. That was a big step up for us. That's now $600,000. Nobody but nobody could duplicate what my dad did as an eighth grade dropout and buy a home in California, have a stay at home wife and raise three boys because the cost of living has gotten completely, totally outrageous. It's like he got there. It's yo, I swear to God, it's like he parked the car in front of the restaurant. 
and then drove through a McDonald's. Just right through the building. Like, all you had to do was get out the car and you were there. And somehow, you you are halfway into the 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 uh, the fry machine. You are, how, bro? And one of the things I'm going to do uh, is to uh, is to talk about this ridiculous critical race theory and this crap. How does that affect the cost of living? And I like sometimes I really I do this every stream too. But sometimes I really feel like I'd be full of shit. And then like they say the thing out of their mouths, and I'm like. How did you get to that position where that was your thought process? Because, like, you the type that we'd have jumped in the hood. So, like, how did you make it out of that? Like, did you have anti-bully protections, like, on you? Did you know people? Because, like, unless you went to, like, the, the coldest of white schools, like, we would have looked at you. Like, you was a square, bro. We would have cut you. Damn it down the throats of, of white kids and black kids, teaching the former that they're oppressors and the latter that they're victims. My father never believed that. Kevin Newsom has described this effort as a, uh, a collection of white nationalists uh, trying to take me down. Alex, you've known me for a while. I may be a lot of things, but do I look like a white nationalist? Yes. <laughs> you do not. All right, and yes, let's you wrap do. things up with a little bit of fun. We play a game called Personal Issues to learn uh, your favorite. Of human bondage. <laughs> Okay, Larry, thank you so much. Up next. Okay, I thought it was going to be a fucking 22-minute video, but I'm glad it's not, because now we can keep going. All right. Larry Elder thinks minimum wage should be this, zero, zero dollars. Okay. We've had an economics conversation on here before, so I'm going to just ride up to speed with you. Um... There is an argument to be made that the free market should determine the livable wage. Now, setting a federal uh, minimum wage disincentivizes people from ever raising the wage because the government says this is the lowest you can pay somebody. So I would obviously go for the lower. People have said if their employer could pay you nothing, they would. With no federal minimum wage, you could incentivize people to collectively bargain to just never work until w r uh, wages are raised. Because in that sense, what ends up happening is, so let's say like in New York City, you can't work anywhere, you, know, you can't like, do any job and live here for less than, let's say, we're going arbitrary, so just pretend with me, uh, $70 an hour. Like, it's impossible. You can't buy food. You can't buy water. You can't buy clothes, nothing. You need $70 an hour to be able to even barely afford anything. I could have just picked the hypothetical place, but it's like, for some people in some weird form or fashion, they probably would think that it costs about that much to live here. Which, to be honest, it, it kind of do. Like, you kind of do need, like, $25, $30 an hour if you're trying to do something, you know. And that's full time. But anyway... Um, if everyone knew that that was how much that you needed to live, you could collectively bargain to only get hired at that rate. And it would force the employers to either up the wages near to because the workforce now obviously that's like you're saying well that's socialism or whatever but it's like a kind of there's there's uh, there's another factor i'm missing but my brain just can't see i don't always have every single answer off the top of my head but it is it, there's a piece i'm missing but basically if like it's a union but it's set because nobody will accept a certain number like they still can pay you whatever and you might have to accept that but like because there's no minimum wage it forces everybody to pay more to attract workers this is obvious that part with a minimum wage it says at law i'm allowed to pay you this little 
you have to prove to me that you deserve more and I can keep you locked within that situation because I am paying you the federally mandated minimum. Without a federally mandated minimum, people wouldn't be able to get jobs except for like $2.13 an hour. Wow, even though people fucking do that already. So it would force the labor pool to raise up the wages or force the employers to raise up the wages in order to even get people to come in. In a minimum wage society, anyway, I've said it already. That's the argument. That's a really bad argument because it exists in places where it, like, it makes sense, but then also the value of money is lower. You're on record as calling for the end to the minimum wage, saying, quote, the correct minimum wage ought to be zero. Right. How do you think California voters currently earning the minimum wage, which is 13 to 14 dollars an hour, would react to that? Well, uh, given the um, indoctrination that people have about the minimum wage, they probably wouldn't react to it well. I would point out that there was editorial in 1987 uh, in the New 1987. You are quoting me something from 1987. You and all your glorious wisdom think that something from 1987 is applicable on August 4th, 2021. New York Times, an editorial, not op-ed piece. And the headline is correct minimum wage 0.00. And they made all the economic 101 arguments. That is that when you arbitrarily... Uh, Minimum wage is not economics 101. I know that that's pedantic to say, but here's why messaging is important. And this is something that the left needs to learn a lot more than the right, because the right can say whatever the fuck they want, and the message somehow gets across. So we're going to focus on the left for this one. If I tell you to get a flu shot, you could tell me, no, I don't want a flu shot. If I tell you, yo, there's a vaccine for the flu available, you would think a little differently about it, right? Because it sounds different. That's the whole point we're, we're landing towards here. It sounds different. Okay, cool. Economics 101. It's basic economics. That is like understanding inflation and the rate of a free market as complex as the United States would take somebody a really fucking long time to gather. Basic economics does not even remotely cover why systems work the way they do in America. And then we have to realize that the study of economics is based on entrepreneurship, based on the old level of distribution of wealth, which only created a wealth in, uh, inequality as it went further and further. So the study of economics is really about how the 1% interacts with one another, not about your fucking bread, bro. Like, <laughs> anyway... That's why things like saying that is like, oh, I see you're trying to like lull people into, wow, that really is simple. He really does understand what he's saying. He really does get it. I think that the Democrats have been doing a terrible job as of late. And maybe, just maybe, we should vote in a Republican. Maybe he can bring us the prosperity and change that we need. Yes to Larry Elder. You do that? It's the gulag. It's the fucking wall for you, okay? No, honey, take off the eyelashes. No, no, take off the nails. Don't wear the shoes, it's just a wall. Sister, go like, nobody dating you in here. It's not happening. Good night. Increase the cost of labor. Uh, all sorts of bad consequences come from that. People's hours are cut back. Uh, hiring the Sometimes I feel like I'll be forcing myself to be funny and then I realize I'm just, that's just me. <laughs> So, like, I want to laugh to myself, but, like, I feel it's weird to laugh at your own shit. <laughs> oh! Decision is deferred. Uh, prices, of, prices of goods go up in order to, to uh, compensate for that forced increase in labor, which is usually the biggest cost in running any kind of business. Um, Milton Friedman, the Nobel laureate um, economist, uh, who was a friend of mine, uh, said that he believes that the minimum wage was, quote, the most anti-Negro law on the statute books, close quote, because at one time, believe it or not, a black teenager was more likely to be employed than a white teenager, more likely to be employed than a white adult, more likely to be employed than a black adult because that teenager was able to sell his labor for less. When you come in with the minimum wage, you are, uh, you are foreclosing the ability of people, often with, uh, with little education and little skills, to get a job. I, don't, I never have quite understood why a third party like government, uh, why that government feels it's anybody's business what my relationship is with an individual who willingly sold his labor uh, and my relationship with that person when I willingly bought that labor. 
uh, why two people who are adults can't determine what the price of labor ought to be is beyond me, and why a third party feels it's his or her business to interfere with that is also beyond me. Please don't let this guy be fucking governor, bro. Like, please don't let this guy be fucking governor. I'm begging you. Allegations tonight of possible voter fraud in the upcoming recall election of Governor Newsom. CVS2 political reporter Tom Wade explains why some voters are complaining about their mail-in ballots. You have to pay attention to these two holes. This video posted by Fix California, a pro-recall group, claims the recall ballot envelopes are flawed. The woman in this video points out that depending on how you place your marked ballot in the L.A. County envelope, someone may be able to see how you voted. From the outside of the mail-in ballot, you can see if somebody has voted yes to recall Newsom. The holes are now causing a stir online. Very... I feel like maybe you shouldn't flip it in that direction. I feel like there's something about that. Like, Sketchy I'm not sure here. And irresponsible, in my opinion. The LA County Registrar's Office responded to this video, tweeting, this has been part of the envelope design for years. The holes serve both an accessibility purpose and a, a quality, quality assurance, assurance purpose after the fact to validate no voted ballots are left unprocessed and established recommended practice. I think it's really important that we have a secret ballot. Loyola law professor and political analyst Jessica Levinson. Is it a problem that people can peek in and look to see who you voted for? Yeah, I think that that should be fixed. Remember, you can either send in or drop off your ballot depending on how you want to do it. You can also track your ballot, and we put a link to how to do that on our website, cbsla.com, in the As Seen on TV section. In the newsroom, I'm Tom Waite, CBS 2 News. I forgot about tracking your ballot, but like, isn't there a thing where like people who have that certain information can also do it or do they need, I think you need your, like your voter ID card or something. Um, but, um, yeah, that sounds like a, you could just flip the shit over. Yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah. And people be quoting Stalin like it's Mark, like a thing, bro. And a GOP contender John Cox has just begun his final okay, this is today. campaign event here in Long Beach. More of a press event, not really a rally. He's polling in the single digits, but he's getting his message out on this election day nonetheless. Larry Elder is the front runner of the recall candidates. And take a look at this website that the campaign launched even well before polls have closed. Uh, it alleges California election fraud and offers a tip line for people. Uh, the allegation is baseless. It comes uh, days after Elder warned of unsubstantiated quote unquote shenanigans ahead of the recall election. And it, of course, echoes falsehoods former President Trump spread about the 2020 election. Now, Larry Elder, the conservative radio talk show host, is the clear front runner of the recall candidates by a wide margin. An average of election polls from the website 538 show 30 percent would want him to replace Governor Newsom if Newsom were to be recalled. Now, Elder does not have any scheduled campaign events today ahead of an election. Election party tonight at the Costa Mesa Hilton. Yesterday, he had multiple events in Southern California, including one last night where KTLA caught up with him. The latest polls do suggest Newsom is in a good position to defeat his recall challengers. Elder telling us he's not deterred by the polls. What they say is that it's a Republican takeover. They haven't uttered these magic words. Gavin Newsom has done a fine job for the people of California because they can't. So I don't put a whole lot of stock in those polls. All I know is that people are mad. Uh, two million people signed the petition to have him recalled. All right, and back out here live, we will hear from John Cox. Just after this, I'll have that uh, voted in the last hour. That's right, Christine. It was a long, long day for This was on my birthday. Holy shit. Candidate. He started his day in Glendale at an event with firefighters. Then he came out here to Downey. Take a look. 
Ladies and gentlemen, stand with me. Help me welcome Larry Elder. At new season, LA Church and Downey. Recall Republican candidate Larry Elder receives a rock star. Negative drip, bro. <laughs> Negative fucking drip. <laughs> Only to be interrupted. What is this? <laughs> what is this haircut? What is this hairline? What are you wearing? Are you wearing jeans? Did by this heckler. <laughs> Security immediately grabbed the man and pushed him out of the building. Elder continued as if it never happened. I love that when people grab, like, when you people grab, like, uh, a heckler or something, and you see the heckler kind of, like, walking forward. You see the dude, like, walking forward. Because it's like, I know I'm wrong here, and I'm not trying to fight you to talk. I was just trying to get my two seconds in. Like, look at that. You covered me. Like, that's more than anything I could have asked for. I'm doing this is because uh, we got a state to save. In the... <laughs> Yo, if a Democrat wants to win a race, just ask me how to do it. I could give you the resources. <laughs> I can beat them at their own game. If I was a Republican, I would be dangerous. Like, oh my God. This, like, <laughs> Kino Town Hall meeting. Elder talked about everything from the high cost of living to the rise in crime in California. And we're talking about violent crime. Up 41% shootings and murders. And uh, this is... That's just that. Damn, least healthy state is Alaska? Oh my god. God, I, Alaska? I guess because it's so isolated that these things would happen much more true. Okay, so they haven't really aggregated data for California. Uh, California homicides jump. The deadliest year. Oh, 31% in 2020. Well, I'm not even going to read that. Like, because the answer to the question is pandemic. Like, I feel like people really don't get like what happened like what happened in real life like you know you went through a pandemic but do you know everyone else went through the pandemic hold on the 2202 homicides were 523 more while the rate increased for 4.2 that's the most slang since the financial crash. Black people make up 6.5, but accounted for... Yeah, I'm out. I'm out. 50... What is it? I don't forgot it. What is it? The 1550, 1350 rule? Yeah, I'm out. Don't 1350 me. I'm looking for... We got anything for... I mean, I've kind of said it, but like... Okay, that's 2016. All right, we're not finding anything directly, but I'm still calling bullshit on that. And disproportionately, the people who are hurt by the rise of crime are black and brown people living in urban areas. When it comes to illegal immigration. I do not believe that we should be encouraging illegal immigration no matter what country you come from. He accuses Governor Gavin Newsom of poorly handling the pandemic. I wouldn't have shut down the state. <laughs> I wouldn't have shut down the state. I would have relied on the common sense and the judgment of men and women and their parents profiles? to determine what should be done. Those in attendance seem to love the message. Listen, I came here in 1971. Block. I have lived here all my life. And I'm considering leaving the state because I cannot stand it here anymore. I just can't. And he brings you hope? He, oh my goodness, yes. Larry's amazing. I've been listening to him for 25 years. So he's amazing. I was so glad, so, so very glad that he decided 
to run because we need somebody that represents the values that we have. El who? 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 Yo, explain. Run that back for me. The promise to protect the freedom of religion. He expressed he's pro-life and he does not believe racism is a problem in America. And when I become governor, I'm going to use the power of my bully pulpit to say things like that, to stop this nonsense. Racism has never been less significant in America than today. I'm going to say this one time, and I'm going I'm to do the whole thing just for you. Racism is even more prevalent now than it was then because it's not as overt as it was back then. See, to be a racist back then, KKK segregation, Jim Crow was going on, you could outwardly be that. So if you didn't want the issue or the confrontation, you weren't outwardly that. Now it's bad, it's taboo. So now you gotta be inwardly that. You have to physically finagle things. You work in a bank office, I'm denying this person this loan because I don't like black people. I've got Susan, I've got Jenny, I've got Carl, I've got Jimmy, and I've got Dave. All five of them will look at my proposal on why we should reject this loan, reject this appeal for a loan, and none of them will be the wiser that I just said no because I don't like black people. See? Now it's innate, baked in. Once you start hating us, you find ways to get your little microaggressions in. You find ways, I'm not going to let this black person buy this car. Sorry, Sonny. Uh, we not, I know it was said fifteen hundred, but it's actually gonna have to be forty five. I know your budget's only three grand, so I guess I'm gonna have to see you on some other side of the road, brother. Damn. Quote me on that. One woman walked out calling Elder a bleeping hypocrite. Outside the church, the heckler who was kicked out had a lot more to say. But elder supporters say I thought the heckler was a woman. Church. One woman walked out calling Is that the not the woman with the hair? Say. That's not the but same elder person. Supporters say he's the right is this man Fox? For the job. <laughs> yeah, of course Tuesday, it is. Tuesday, they'll be voting for Larry Elder. He is out to change and improve. And he's going about it the right way. He's not By stealing the seat because of a recall? Like, woman, what do you think? Doing it as a government entity. He's doing it as a person who cares. Oh, no, not the end. Oh, God, Republicans are starting to. You see how Republicans have reprogrammed the shitty things they do as like a, a, a benefit catch all? I hate that because it's like now when you get progressive Democrats who actually care, they get lumped in with that as lip service because when Larry Elder loses as rigged, Democrats just start saying your elections are rigged. Just all the elections are rigged. Maybe we shouldn't have elections. <laughs> Maybe we should just, uh, you know, get like one person to like, you know, do everything. Let's get let's get Bill Nye the science guy. Bill Nye the science guy. Steve from Blue's Clues. Uh, we'll get Arthur. Uh, Barney, uh, some of the Between the Lions characters, we'll get um, the actors from Cyber Chase, we'll get uh, Christopher Lloyd, and our president, our de facto leader will be Christopher Walken. Because, <laughs> come on, like, how you gonna have a negotiation with him? It, like, the whole cast of Inglorious Bastards, like, that, that's our government from now on. <laughs> when, like, the vice president would be Jeffrey Dean Morgan. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Who's arguing with that? If elected, the 69-year-old candidate says that he plans to declare a state of emergency on house. Nice. And he plans to repeal the vaccine mandate. Alex Christine, I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. So it looked like a lot of love for Larry Elder, Gina, but not a lot of masks for the indoor event. 
No, the really, I, I try to count, mostly everyone was maskless except the media. All right. Of the socialist Democrats. You see these comments? That's why YouTube is a, is a, is a, is a, look. Toxic Tiki, five subscribers. Tough Mudder, New England, Funky Monkey. In other words, if you get experiences in life, if you get experiences in life, that's that you, you, you win everything. We just heard that Joe Biden's mandating vaccines for 80 million private sector workers. Larry Elders running for governor in California. The recall election there is Divider on the chief. 14th. Wow. He joins us with his. We're doing reaction. the Obama Larry, tan suit I don't care thing. What wow. you think of vaccines? You're for them, you're against them. America got a little less free today, and there's nothing we're going to be able to do to change that. How? There are jobs that are not va mandating vaccines, skirting the rules. They could be like, yo, get a fake vax card. We'll just use that. Like, how? There are people willingly going against the mandates every time they come out. Every time, let's do a mask. Let's do a vaccine. Let's do a social distance. There are people who consistently every single day do not do these things. And they, nobody's arresting them. Well, you're right. I hate Again, it I'm here. not anti-vaccine. I've been vaccinated. I think vaccines do work. I'm in a high-risk category. But a lot of people have made a very different decision. Uh, and you're... Ah, oh, in the same fucking sentence. Literally, word after word, he says the thing. Quite right. Uh, freedom ought to stand for something. Uh, this is on a collision course to the United States Supreme Court. Uh, and I believe that what Joe Biden just now did will be ruled to be unconstitutional. It'll take a while for it to get there. But I think maybe 5-4, maybe even 6-3, it's going to be determined to be unconstitutional, Jesse. The problem is people in California, Larry, they love it. They don't care if it's legal. They just want to jam this stuff down people's throats, into their arms. They don't care. Down people's throats, into their arms. Because it's socialist propaganda that that I agree with you. Vaccines do work, but people should have the choice whether to use it, even though it works, which solves the issue of why you would want to choose between not or having it. It does work. So, like, it should be your choice to, you know, get something life saving that works, because if you didn't get the thing that works, you could die. You know, I think that's the end of this segment. Yeah. Hopefully you did not vote in Larry Elder. Like, subscribe. The thing.